Hi students, this is Mr. Yang. Today we're going to talk about 1.4 where we learn about little equations. So let's get started. A little equation is an equation which consists primarily of letters. Formulas are an example of little equations. Formulas often involve several variables and numbers. Depending on the situation, it might be useful to have one particular variable all by itself. So for example, let's say we want to get letter M by itself. Instead of saying get M by itself, the instruction will instead say solve for M. So basically when you see in a question solve for M, that means try to move everything else to the other side of the equation so M is by itself. In order to do this, we will use our equation solving skills and inverse operations. So we are solving equations again, and inverse operations are just when it's being added, we're going to subtract to get rid of it. When it's being multiplied, we're going to divide to get rid of it. So now let's review some uh, formulas. First, circumference of a circle and area of a circle. They will both involve pi and r. Circumference of a circle is c equals 2 pi r. Area of a circle is a equals pi r squared. Next, volume of a rectangular prism is v equals length times width times height. So a rectangular prism is just a shape like this. That is a rectangular prism. Next, Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's a formula we have learned for a while. Last two, volume of a cone. A cone is part of a cylinder, which is pi r squared h. The cone is part of it, so times by one third. And the area of a trapezoid, this is the trapezoid, the top is the base 1, the bottom is base 2, and then we have a height. Next, when we solve for the indicated variable, it means we will treat everything other than the indicated variable as a constant. So please keep this in mind because this will be important when we get to the examples. In other words, we're going to think of everything else as just a plain old number. Now let's look at some examples. Example one, solve for w. w is right here, and we do need to know that means we need to get rid of the l and the h. Before we get rid of them, these three things are being multiplied, which means if we want to get rid of the l and the h, we are going to divide by l and h on both sides. So now the L is gone, the H is gone. W equals V over LH. The question says solve for W, and W is by itself now, so we're done. Example two, solve for R. That means we need to get rid of the two pi. So I am going to divide by two pi on both sides. That will give me R equals C over two pi. Please make sure to write the w equal and an r equal because that's in indicating to us that we're solving for that. Example three, solving for h. That means we need to get rid of everything else. So first thing popped to your mind would be, well, I see parentheses, so that I sh so that means I should distribute. That would give you one half b one plus one half b two times h outside. Well, but here's a problem. If we're solving for h. That means we need to get rid of this whole thing, and that does not look pretty. So, instead, here's what we're actually going to do. We are going to get rid of things one at a time. We're going to start getting rid of the one half first. You can choose to think it as divide by one half, but whenever we're dividing by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. We're always going to multiply by the reciprocal to get rid of a fraction. So times 2 over 1 on both sides. 1 half times 2 over 1 is gone, so we have 2a on the left side. The right side now has b1 plus b2 times a. Now you might be wondering, wait, I just multiply by 2. Doesn't that mean I should multiply everything by 2? Well, think about it. On the right side is all multiplication. The plus is inside the parentheses, so that doesn't affect anything. If you actually multiply by 2 on every single thing, you basically multiplied by 8 on the right side, which is not right. Okay, so we only multiply by 2. Now I need to get rid of the b1 plus b2, so I'm going to divide b1 plus b2 on both sides. That's going to give me a 
uh, well, not A, it should be H. That will give me H equals 2A over B1 plus B2. Now, example four. Same thing, we are going to get rid of the one third by multiplying both sides by A3. So the one third is gone. Again, this multiplying is not going to be distributed to all these other things because they're all multiplication in three. So we have 3v equals pi r square h. We're solving for h. That means we need to get rid of the pi r square. So by both sides, by pi r square, we would get h equals 3v over pi r square. That is number four. Now number five. We're solving for f. That means we need to get rid of the 15 and the 1 half. So, in order to get start getting rid of things, some of you may think, oh, I'm just going to subtract 15 on both sides. That is totally fine. That will give you d minus 15 equals 1 half f. Next, I'm going to need to multiply by 2 to get rid of the 1 half. However, you do need to remember, when you do that, you need to multiply everything by 2. Because this step is basically multiplying the right side by a 2 and the left side the whole thing by a 2. So you do need to distribute the 2 in to move further. So that's going to give us 2d minus 30 that equals 2f. Some of you might also think, wait, but I don't have to subtract 15. I can also just get rid of the two, uh, one half. That's fine too. You're going to multiply both sides by 2. But again, it's the same thing. Because there's addition, when you just multiply by a 2, you do need to multiply everything by 2. That, instead, will give you 2d equals 30 plus f. I just need to subtract 30 on both sides. That's going to give me 2d minus 30 equals f, which is the same result. So both methods work. You could either get rid of the 15 first, or you can get rid of the 1 half first. Either way, you just need to remember when you multiply by 2, Every single thing will be multiplied by 2. Next, number 6. We are solving for c. That means we're trying to get rid of the square. In order to get rid of the square, we are going to take square root on both sides. That cancels. We got c equals square root of a square plus b square. Next. That's actually the final answer to the question. But a lot of you might think, wait, doesn't that just mean same as a plus b. I have a square root and I have a square. They should just cancel. Well, let's actually try it out. You can try with any number, but I'm just going to go with, say, 2 and 3. Let's say a is 2 and b is 3. That will give us a, give us a 5. Now I'm going to put the 2 and 3 in there. That's going to be 2 squared plus 3 squared, which is 4 plus 9, which is square root of 13. Hey, you can clearly see Square root of 5 and square root of 13 are not the same thing. So they are not equal. You will learn next year how to actually make them equal. But for now, you can just remember when there's addition sign in the middle, you can't just take the square root of hoping it's going to cancel with the square. That's number 6. Number 7. I'm going to start a question with a different one for you to have a look. If the question is like this. I change a k into a 7. You should all know how to solve it because that's what we learned in 1.2. When it's all fractions, we are going to find the common denominator for all the denominators, which in this case is negative 8, and we're going to multiply every single thing by negative 8. Now this requires, well this is something we ha I have talked about right here. We will treat everything other than the indicated variable as a constant, or in other words, a number. So for this example, 7, even if I change the k into a, uh, in, I change the 7 into a k, that doesn't change anything. I'm still just solving for the y. You can totally treat the k exactly the same as a 7. So that means I will have the same first step. Multiply by a negative 8 on every single thing. First part, they cancel, that will get me a y. And the next part, if you're having trouble dealing with that, k over 4 times negative 8. You can treat negative 8 as negative 8 over 1. k over 4 could just be 1, k over 4. The top will be negative 8k, the bottom will be 4, which gives you minus 2k. 
the right side, 9 times negative 8, that's negative 72. So I add 2k on both sides, y equals 2k minus 72. Next, I'm in number 8. I'm going to add 3k on both sides. So I got negative 2x equals 3k minus 1. Divide both sides by two, negative 2. A lot of you might think, well, I just need to divide by negative 2. So I'm just going to write it that way, the whole thing divided by negative 2. That gives me this, which is totally fine. However, you will see in example 9, when we actually do that, it's going to make things more complicated. So my suggestion is, when you actually divide, divide it with every single one. Separate. So that will give me 3k over negative 2, and then it's negative 1 over negative 2, which becomes a positive 1 half. That's number 8. Number 9. I see a fraction again, so I'm going to try to get rid of it, times by 5 over 3 on both sides. I got 5 over 3m, they cancel, equals az plus k. I can also write 5 over 3m as 5m over 3, that's the same. Okay, next I need to subtract k on both sides. So I got 5m over 3 minus k equals az. Now I'm solving for z, that means I need to get rid of the a, so I'm going to divide by a. Here, if you do what you did in example 8, you're going to divide a on like that. And that's going to be a fraction inside an expression on the top of a fraction. That's going to be hard to simplify. And that's why I suggest you to actually divide them separately. Divide by a and divide by c. So since 3 is being divided, a is also being divided. That's the same as dividing by 3a minus k over a. The right side is just a z. If you're having trouble thinking through about this part, let's have a look. 5m over 3, but divided by a, which is basically the same as dividing by a over 1. That can be turned into 5m over 3, multiplied by the reciprocal, which is 1 over a. And you can see the 3 and the a are both on the bottom, so it's 5m over 3a. Now last one, example 10. Solving for x. I'm going to get rid of the 4, so move 4 to the other side. Negative xy equals z minus 2. Next, I'm going to need to get rid of the negative y. So divide by negative y on every single thing separately. Negative side is gone, y is gone. So x equals z over negative y. The negative 4 and the negative y together become plus 4 over y. And that is the final answer for number 10. That's everything for 1.4a. Thank you.